7 through 11. 7 through 11, okay? In the month that is the month of Nisan, in the twelfth year of King Abhasaurus, they cast Pur, and that is the lot before Haman, from day to day, and from month to month, to the twelfth month, that is the month of Adar. Verse 8, And Haman said unto King Abhasaurus, There is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people, in all the providence of the kingdom, and their laws are diverse from all people, neither keep their other king's laws, therefore it is not for the king prophet to suffer them. Verse nine If it please the king, let us be let it be written that may be that may be destroyed. Let me read that again. If it please the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed, and I will pay ten thousand talents of silver to the hands of those that have the charge business to bring it into the king's treasure. And the king took his ring from his hand and gave it to Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agadite, the Jew's enemy. The Jew's enemy. Then the scribe, and the king said unto Haman, The silver is given to thee, the people also to do with them as it seemeth good to thee. Then were the king's scribes called on the thirteenth day of the first month, and there was written according to all that Haman had commanded unto the king's lieutenant and to the governors that were over every providence and to the rulers of every people of every providence according to the writing thereof and to every people after their language in the name of the king Ahasuerus which was it written and sealed with the king's ring with the king's ring and for the 14th the 13th verse and the letters were sent by post unto all the king's providence to destroy and kill and to cause to perish all Jews both young and old little children and women in one day even upon the 13th day of the 12th month which is the month Adar and to take the spoils of them for prey Okay, verse number 14. The copy of the writing for a commandment to be given in every providence was published unto all people that they should be ready against that day. Oh, this is awesome, isn't it? Look what he's doing. Okay, let's go to Esther, the 8th chapter, um, verses 3 to 8. The decree has been signed and set out. This is all simply because Haman was angry at Mordecai and he was prejudiced against Jews. So he wanted to kill Mordecai and all the Jews. Let's go to Esther, the 8th chapter, verses 3 through 8. And in this, uh, the, uh, the decree against the Jews is struck down. Decree against the Jews is struck down. Esther 8 3 3 to 8 and 16 and 17. Verse 3 And Esther spake yet again before the king and fell down at his feet and besought him with tears to put away the mischief Haman the Agagite and his device that he had devised against the Jews. Then the king held out the golden scepter toward Esther, so Esther arose and stood before the king. He just couldn't walk up and start talking to the king. She had to get permission to approach to talk to the king. All right. 
verse number 5, and said, If it please the king, and if I have found favor in his sight, and the thing seems right before the king, and I be pleasing in his eyes, let it be written to reverse the letter devised by Haman, the son of Hamadiah, the Agite, which he wrote to destroy the Jews, which are in all the king's provinces. Verse 6, For how can I endure to see the evil that shall come unto my people? Or how can I endure to see the destruction of my kindreds? Destruction of her kindreds. Then the king has it said unto Esther, the queen, and to Mordecai, the Jew, Behold, I have given Esther the house of Haman, and him they have hanged upon the gallows, because he laid his hands upon the Jews. And verse 8, Write ye also for the Jews as it is likened you in the king's name, and seal it with the king's ring. For the writing which is written in the king's name, and seal with the king's ring, may no man reverse. Okay? Let's look at um, 16 and 17. Verses 16 and 17. This is um, the decree against the Jews. It's being struck down. 16 and 17. Here we go. 16 says, The Jews had light and gladness and joy and honor. 17. In every providence and in every city, with every, the king's command, Meant and his decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast, a good day. And many of the people of the land became Jews, and many of the people of the land became Jews, for the fear of the Jews fell upon them. Okay. Now let's look at, um, this is, we are up to Friday now, Festival of Purim established. This is Esther, the ninth chapter. Verses eight through eighteen through twenty three and twenty nine through thirty two. This is a festival. This will be um, Esther the ninth chapter. Esther the ninth chapter, verses eighteen through twenty three. Eighteen through twenty three. All right. The feast of Purim inaugurated, starting at eighteen. But the Jews that were in Shushan assembled together on the thirteenth day thereof, and on the thirteenth, fourteenth thereof, and on the fifteenth day of the same day, rested and made it a day of feasting and gladness. Nineteen. Therefore, the Jews of the village that dwelt in the unwalled town made the fourteenth day of the month Adar a day of gladness and fe- feasting, and a good day and of sending portions one to another. All right. And number 20 says, And Mordecai wrote these things and sent letters unto all the Jews that were in all the providence of the king Ahasuerus, both nigh and far, to establish this among them, that they should keep the 14th day of the month Adar and the 15th day of the same year as the days wherein the Jews rested upon their enemies enemies, and the month which was turned in, unto them from sorrow to joy and from mourning into good day, that they should make them days of feasting and joy and of sending portions one to another and gifts to the poor. And 23 verse says, And the Jews understood and the Jews, I'm sorry, and the Jews undertook to do as they had begun, and as Mordecai had written unto them. All right. The last one, Mordecai advances welfare of the Jews. Mordecai advances the welfare of the Jews. This is Esther, the 10th chapter, verses 1 through 3. Mordecai is given great authority. It is totally turn from um, uh, what um, Haman had planned and God has an awesome way of turning things around okay let's look at um, 
And last one, Mordecai is given a great authority. And the king of Hazarus laid a tribute upon the land and upon the isles of the sea. And all the acts of his power and his might and the declaration of greatness of Mordecai whereunto the king advanced him and they were written in the book of the chronicles of the king of Mordecai and Persia. Awesome. And look at that. Look at that. And finally, verse 3. For Mordecai the Jew was next unto the king of Hazarus, and great among the Jews, and accepted of the multitude of his brethren, seeking the wealth of his people, and speaking peace to all his seed. Oh, man. Mordecai has given great authority. Now for the Sunday school lesson, Esther and Esther's plea and Hammer's punishment is Esther the seventh chapter, verses one through nine. This is the actual Sunday school lesson as we begin. All right, we are in the spring quarter, twenty twenty, in the unit two. God promises a just kingdom. This will be lesson number eight for April the nineteenth, twenty twenty. Our devotional reading will come from Luke, the 19th chapter, verses 11 through 26. Our background scripture is going to come from Esther, the third chapter, um, 5 through 7. And the print passage comes from Esther, the seventh chapter, verses 1 through 10. Our key verse for this Sunday school lesson, They hang Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then was... The king's wrath pacified. Esther the seventh chapter and the tenth verse, King James Version. All right, justice prevails is the new subject. Is the whole is the big subject. Justice prevails. The lesson aim as a result of experience in this lesson, the person should be able to do these things. I spread the story of Esther as a triumph of justice. Since the treasurer treachery, since that treasure treachery will not win. Third, commit to acting justly in every situation with the assurance that God triumphs over evil. Alright. Uh, key terms Enoch, a uh, Hebrew, uh, Chamberlain Court of officers, gallows, plank, stick, wood. It is a structure in which they hang criminals to pole. And then petition, Hebrews, um, request a thing, ask for. All right. Let's see. We're going to begin by reading. Um... The lesson in focus, and then we'll lead why the lesson matters last. Here we go. The lesson in focus, the law of reciprocity of the law that's reciprocating of the law of sowing and reaping is clearly taught in the word of God. Simply summarized, it means that we will receive as a result of what we give or do. The scripture makes it clear that we might receive the same thing that was given or what we need in exchange for prioritizing God's will in our lives. One of the most explicit examples of represent and note coming right back to you, represent is the New Testament of Galatians 6, 7, and 10. Then Paul makes it clear that we will receive reap. You're, you're going to reap what you sow? This is what this is all about. In kind, what we have sown without respect of person. This is both encouraging and divine warning at the same time. Giving or sowing done selflessly to please God positions us to be blessed even more to use for his holy, use for his, for his glory and for his good. Of others, see Luke the sixth chapter and the thirty-eight verse. On the other hand, we are warned that sowing seeds of injustice and wickedness results in receiving his judgment and condemnation. 
we may struggle with 